morning everyone in today's class we are going to discuss about regulation of respiration the respiration is under dual control it is nervous control and chemical coordination let us see the nervous control first the normal quiet breathing occurs involuntarily usually humans breathe about 12 times a minute but infants breathe 44 times a minute the steady rate is controlled by group of neurons located in the medulla oblongata and pons varoli the respiratory center in fact regulates the rate and the depth of breathing it is divided into three major groups of neurons called dorsal respiratory group ventral respiratory group and pneumotaxic center the first two centers that is dorsal respiratory group and ventral respiratory group are influenced by stretch receptors and chemoreceptors the dorsal respiratory group of neurons are located in the dorsal portion of the medulla oblongata this group of neurons mainly causes inspiration the ventral group of neurons are located in the ventrolateral part of the medulla oblongata and this sends signals for both inspiration as well as expiration the pneumotaxic center is located in the dorsal part of the pons varoli it sends signals to all the neurons of dorsal respiratory group and only to inspiratory neurons of ventral respiratory group its main job is to limit the inspiration let us see how the chemical control takes place in the respiration large number of chemoreceptors are located in the carotid bodies which are located bilaterally in the bifurcations of the common carotid arteries what are the carotid arteries the carotid arteries or the arteries which supplies the blood to the heart and their afferent nerve fibers pass through ninth cranial nerve which is called as glossopharyngeal cranial nerve and then to the dorsal respiratory group of neurons in the medulla oblongata number of chemoreceptors are located in the aortic bodies which are located along the arc of aorta their afferent fibers pass through the 10th cranial nerve which is considered as vagus cranial nerve and hence to the dorsal respiratory group of neurons usually rate of breathing is controlled by carbon dioxide level of the arterial blood and cerebrospinal fluid the chemoreceptors in the brain aortic arc and carotid sinus detect the carbon dioxide ph and oxygen levels in the blood and pass information to the brain's rhythmic centers the latter then send appropriate nerve impulses to respiratory muscles which quicken or slow down breathing as required surprisingly the level of carbon dioxide has more effect on breathing than does the level of oxygen if the carbon dioxide content of the blood drops below a certain critical level breathing stops if we hold our breath by closing the nostrils carbon dioxide level in the blood rises and breathing is accelerated on reopening the nostrils if we resort to repeat deep inhalations and exhalations in rapid successions the carbon dioxide level of the blood falls so much then that we can hold breath longer this is a dangerous practice by swimmers the swimmers often resort to repeated deep inhalations and exhalations in rapid succession to store oxygen so that they can swim under water for a long time this practice is dangerous as a person swims under water the oxygen in his blood gradually used up and he feels no urge to breathe because 
normal carbon dioxide concentration is not formed. As the blood oxygen level falls, he may lose consciousness and die if not rescued. This process has caused many drowning accidents in the swimming pools. Oxygen does not seem to have a significant effect on the respiratory centers. There are many marine animals which can make long underwater dives. As they have more blood per kilogram of body weight, it can store more oxygen in blood and muscles. It will have a large spleen with, it, with a considerable stockpile of blood and can reduce oxygen consumption rate when underwater. Thank you.